I'm currently a Washington Aerospace Scholar. I am a Washington Aerospace Scholar. I'm a Washington Aerospace Scholar. I'm 17. And I'm a Washington Aerospace Scholar from Bellingham, Washington. I was a WAS scholar in 2013. I'm at Cal Poly uh, San Luis Obispo studying aerospace engineering. And I think WAS was one of the like key programs that really helped me decide what I wanted to do. Definitely worth it, in my opinion. The, you get UW credit for it. You also get a lot of things that you won't learn in high school and you won't learn in college. You'll meet people that you will never ever meet in real life. We have people from Aerojet Rocketdyne, we have people from Blue Origin, we have people from Planetary Resources, Boeing. Any big Seattle company, pretty much, we talk to in some way or another at some point. And all of those aerospace companies come together for this program. The tour that I was on just, you know, a couple hours ago at Boeing, usually you have to buy a plane to do that. And I don't have the budget to buy a 747. So this is the only way that I would get to do that. And we got to walk around on the floor and see the planes. It was definitely worth it. I'm Chris Young, and I'm a digital learning assistant. We built a rocket out of odds and ends, basically, that we launched today with actual rocket motors. Uh, my name is Paz Clearwater. I'm an education specialist at the Museum of Flight. Um, I've been with Washington Aerospace Scholars Program for five summers now. Um, my main role is to help in the evenings with all the engineering challenges as well as uh, support for some of our tours and activities that we do. Uh, my favorite part of this program is um, probably that we give kids a place where they get to meet students just like them. Maybe in their schools they come from they are the only person who likes aerospace engineering or uh, science and math and now they're with 40 other students who like the same things. Um, also, I really like, we uh, try to keep it, the environment fun, but we also keep it very professional. So they, they're put on the teams, um, and they're required to work together, work with other teams on, you know, I'm planning a mission to Mars, and they're working on getting to Mars, and living on Mars, and working on Mars, and then another team that wraps it all up and combines those team efforts in a mission integration team. So they're really getting their first taste of what professional networking is like, um, what man project management is like, what it's like to work within an engineering team. Um, you know, they're high achieving students and they are usually the, the king of whatever class that they're in. And this time now they are just one student um, as part of a team. So it's really fun. The student interactions are awesome. The students that we get are fantastic. Um, probably some of the best, best kids in Washington, in my opinion. Yeah, so this week they've, they've all been planning, like I said, their Mars mission. So they've been doing research on what a spacecraft would be like, um, what living on Mars would be like, what kind of habitats and exercise and diet astronauts would need. Um, but in addition to that mission planning, they've also been doing engineering challenges. So um, they've been given lists of materials and uh, mission parameters and a bunch of really crazy constraints that we put on them to make them think on their feet. And we constantly update the environment. So it's just like, a, like a working in an engineering office might be.
Basically, we're designing a rover that will be able to navigate an obstacle course and find different uh, probes. And then each probe is labeled with a different letter. And then one, we'll have a card with that letter on it. And then we have to analyze the color of it and figure out which sample it was, which we analyzed earlier. And so our rover is gonna have an iPhone on it that's FaceTiming another phone, and that's the only eyes we get. So it's very similar to if you were actually driving a rover on another planet, you won't be able to see your surroundings, just what's in front of you. Hi, my name is Kurt Sandy. I'm the summer residency engineering lead assistant, and I help run the program in the summer and helping with the engineering challenges. Right now, our students are uh, split up into two groups where they are building their rockets, while the other half team is building lander where we simulate a lunar landing, or Martian landing, with an egg drop. So we have the eggs that they're going to be using here, and they have they've been giving a certain amount of money to start the program with, and for every engineering challenge, they have to spend money to buy parts to build their devices. And so like I said, right now they're building the lunar, or the lander right now, and we'll be dropping those sometime later tonight. Just finished the uh, lofting activity, payload lofting, and that's where they have to take their rocket parts and get them from the ground level up to low Earth orbit, which is actually on the balcony. And that one is so much fun because they're blowing up balloons and they're popping while they're trying to blow them up, and it's, it's just fun to watch. And that, to me, that's where the engineering challenges work for them because not only are they trying hard to do it to succeed, but they're having fun doing it. The funny part is, like I say, when the balloons blow, as they're blowing them up and they burst, it's gonna be really scary for them, and it's very funny. And also they have just, they have a great time trying to get them up there, and sometimes they get up and they're like just inches from where their catcher is, and they just can't quite get them. It's just so, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to see, but it's also so much fun to watch them keep trying. It's like, it's kind of everything I ever wanted from a camp condensed into one. And then you add in a, couple, a bit of sleep deprivation and then a lot of fun times with the team and then a lot of shared interests. Uh, the camp is, it's like space on steroids, and so you just you just keep going, and going. So far, we going. have been working on a potential trip to Mars, where we'll be staying there for 500 days with a crew of approximately seven people. Uh, my group, particularly, is the one that is concerned with living there, and so I've been helping design the habitats that will be existing on Mars, along with potential plants that we'll be growing to ensure these long-term survival. Okay, so I was on Team Red, and we called ourselves the Red Darren. Um, and we were in charge of getting a, a manned mission to Mars uh, from low Earth orbit to Mars and making them land on Mars safely and bringing them back home after a 500 day mission to settle a colony um, in Marth Vallis on Mars. So what a, a lot of what we did was getting propulsion systems, radiation mitigation and just designing the cargo vehicle which would send all of the stuff they'd need to make the colony and then sending the crew vehicle, which is send the crew and life systems and all that fun stuff that they really need to survive the four month journey in space. Um, we also made a timeline to project how long the whole travel time would take because there's a lot of things that have to happen in between and if they go wrong, you have to cut the mission. Otherwise, it's all over and your crew just died and that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Team Gray, and for this week we've been uh, the integration team. We've been bringing together the various different teams, all their information they're bringing to us, and our project has been to 
facilitate the entire project. We've been the final deciders, to say, for risk assessment. You'll find some people who are probably going to be astronauts or engineers. Uh, it's really cool seeing what these people are now. They're so much like you, and uh, it's been really interesting hanging out with people. You know, if you have any sort of interest in space or aerospace engineering or any really STEM, you might want to do this. It's an eye-opening thing, seeing how all the diversity we've had in WAS. Uh, it's something I don't get to see all that often. So admittedly, when I started the program, I'd like look because there's the website and it had the roster of all the people. And so I looked at all the names and I'm like, could that be a female? <laughs> and I just wanted to know if I'd be like the only girl here. And it ended up being five of us, so it was okay. Um, <laughs> I thought I'd be, a, I'd be alone in the room and there's just like a bunch of tall white guys just surrounding me, but no, it's okay. I have other people that I can relate to, but even everyone here is so relatable too. They're all like really friendly and we, we're we all the type of people that are attracted to the same like activities. So and a lot of industries now are male dominated. So it's not, so now we're just starting to get, girls are just starting to get onto their feet, especially with the younger generation. We can do these things and we're giving the opportunities to do these things and maybe a bit more than guys just because there's such an emphasis on girls going into the STEM. Um, and I love that because it's really just showing girls, hey, you're not like your parents. You can be anything you want to be. And that's just something beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Uh,